Good morning, church. Welcome to um, PGC Sunday service. And it's my pleasure to be able to speak today, this morning, um, on the book of Malachi, chapter 4. And before we start, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to speak your word. Lord, let me be your tool. Let me be your vessel, Lord. Let me speak the word that you want me to speak. And may your Holy Spirit guide us into further understanding of your word. Lord, I pray that all that is listening to your word, Lord, will be convicted, will be touched, and that the Holy Spirit will stir within their hearts that they will draw close to you and return to you. Thank you, Jesus, and commit the rest of this time into your hand. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, um, good morning. I have chosen um, this chapter for the reason that it has only six verses. And at first I thought six verses should be fairly easy and not too much of preparation. But then I realized that um, it is difficult and challenging because of the content, because of the nature of his position being the last closing word before a 400 years of silence. Uh, there was no prophecy, no prophets coming to Israel at that point of time until Jesus um, was born. So to close the Old Testament, God has really put in what he wanted to say and repeated what are the key message for his people. Um, and this morning we look at Malachi chapter 4. So let's first read through uh, chapter 4, uh, only six verses like I say. Surely the, days, the day is coming, it will burn like a furnace, all the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. And the day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its rays, and you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. Then you will trample on the wicked they will be ashes under the sole of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the hearts of the children to their parents. And, or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. So, I think we are in a series of being serious about God. And for the last three weeks, um, different speakers have spoken on chapter 1, 2 and 3. Um, so today, I would like to uh, uh, frame the message first with uh, exploring um, the context of uh, Malachi and chapter 4, um, that what is the God's message to his people during that time, the key ones. Then we touch on the day of the Lord that will sure take place, uh, warning and assurance to his people. And there's a mention, there's a metaphor of the Son, which is Christ Jesus, the Son of Righteousness. And, and the last parting word of remembering the law and how this whole apply to us uh, Christian today. So, the context of Malachi is really, um, I would put um, uh, this emoticon, uh, and and younger people now would know what this expression means, uh, meh, or indifference. And we read in, in the previous chapter that his people did not give God the honor he deserves. Uh, as we can see from corruption on the priesthood, 
um, there's a spiritual lethargic uh, they were divorce and remarrying uh, are happening and god even mentioned uh, that there were robbery they were robbing god they were withholding their tithes and offerings and in essence people of god have become careless i'll call it indifference and the other word to use is apathy to the things of god and and, and this is in my opinion a very crucial situation a christian can find themselves in and and i can sort of relate to it i'm sure church in this time christians in this time in the 21st century can relate to this because of the um, uh, other uh, attention that we are paying to uh, career uh, family uh, uh, the world that we are we are going after material wealth uh, prosperity and, and there's so many much of this destruction things of god may not have been given the priority and and i would say that a lot of time things of god are not being prioritized and hence there is this it's not that we don't believe god we believe but we are not putting him first uh, it's not that israelites turn away and, uh, and and worship idol at that time no they have been worshiping god in the temple just that they they do it uh, like malaysian we call it a chin chai or uh, no okay i'm doing it for the sake of doing i'm offering to god the the, the, the offerings that that are not the first grade uh, so this this is what's happening in in uh, during the times uh, where this book uh, where this prophecy was given and if we are to look at the previous chapter malachi in total uh, i would like to pick up some of the words that god spoke to them uh, which are i have loved you this is from the very beginning of the chapter one i have loved you israelites i have loved you chapter two i am the refiner's fire i want to make you better i want to refine you to become uh, better people of god and assuring the israelites that i am the lord that do not change i do not change i have been the lord of your forefathers i am the same god now then this key message in chapter 2 verse 7 return to me and i will return to you and God in further chapter 3 says, test me and see concerning the people of God robbing him and hold, holding their tithes. Test me and see if I am not, if I will not do such and such. And in chapter 4, which is the, the chapter we're looking at now, God says, I will punish the evildoer, reward those who feared me. And the last two last two verses of chapter 4 don't forget the law and then God repeat the day of the Lord will come so if we are to have a holy helicopter view of the whole Malachi I would say that it's a message of God's love and uh, to his people despite all the what I will do if or, or all the warnings and punishment, what will happen, what will take place. The key, the key message I would say is that people, I love you. I'm still the same. Come back to me. And, and, and I can imagine myself telling my son um, uh, to, to do good, to, to behave well, to have a good attitude and, and polite and then i said if you don't do this you may come across uh, 
such and such punishment. Or you may uh, lead yourself into uh, uh, circumstances that is not beneficial to you. But when I say those words, when I illustrate those situation, um, the warnings, those are not my key message. The key message is, son, I love you. Listen to me. Uh, be good. Those, those are the key message. And, and I think Malachi in some way is the same uh, message that God wants to tell his people. You know, throughout, since Abraham, all the way until uh, at that point of time, 400 years before Jesus Christ come to earth. People, I have loved you. You have seen all the miracles you've seen. You have been told by the forefathers that these are the things that happen. The, how God has chosen the Israelites and how God has been with them. With the exile, the punishment, the, 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 the exile in Egypt and the return into the temple, into Jerusalem. Have you not known all this? And, and here God is telling us that, you know, I have loved you. And please return to me. Please choose to fear God and not to backslide or fall. And chapter 4, the, the first verse started with surely, started with um, surely the day is coming. And the day is coming, is prophesying about the day, the second coming of Christ. It will be, it will burn like a furnace and there will be punishment for the wicked. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. So surely is there can be no better way to explain surely because it is for sure. Bible says for sure, it's very certain, it is definitely, it is no question, unquestionably, for sure, positively, very certain the day of the Lord will come. And and when he come. He will appear as the refiner's fire uh, where there will be burning like a furnace. The trial will take place in, uh, in chapter 3. Sorcerers, adulterers, perjurers will be judged. And God says that I will spare those who feared me, the righteous among the wicked. There will be distinction between them. So when the Lord comes, there, in the judgment day, there will be distinction between those who fear God, those who fear God and are righteous and found righteous, and the wicked. And this is for sure. This is a guaranteed. It is not optional. It does not depend on whether how uh, the church eventually become. But it's for sure. This his coming is sure. And. I would say that the day of the Lord, the, the anticipation, the, the, the faith that this day will take place, um, whether or not we will live to see it, is the foundation of our Christian faith because we believe the Word of God is true. We believe Jesus Christ came and lived and died and resurrected and He will come again. And that's part of our foundation of our faith. And in distinction between the evildoer and God-fearing people, uh, they are warning and they are assurance. Warning to the evildoers, assurance to the God-fearing people. And in chapter 4, um, if we separate it out, you see the warning to the evildoers. God says that they will burn like furnace. The arrogant and evildoer will be stubble, set on fire. Not a root or a branch will be left, and there will be total destruction. When, 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 when we understand the burning is to the extent that 
root and branch will not be left meaning it's like it's uprooted and burned to ashes so if if for a plant for a vine if you burn the top the leaves their root is still alive they may flourish again over time given the right condition but this is total punishment total destruction and for the god-fearing people god say the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his race and you shall go out and frolic well-fed calves and he further described that the godly people will trample on the wicked the wicked will be ashes that they have been burned and then they become the ashes of the sole of your feet on the day when i act when the day the lord come when the day that god will act there will be deliverance and healing and and god people will be um, rewarded for their faith for their uh, reverence to god so which sides are we on which sides we think we are on um, that's something that we can ponder and are we waiting for this day are we anticipating for this day uh, the coming of our lord and i think it is an excellent metaphor uh, used to to project christ the messiah the savior as the son he is the son of righteousness so if you look at son a, a physical son within uh, this uh, uh, um, planetary system sun is at the central and is sustaining the entire solar system it is grand and glorious it gives life to the world to the natural world and and it gives light it shines forth light lighten up the entire world and and the rays of suns are far reaching encompassing everywhere on the earth but sun also scorches and burns like fire and, and if we compare if we put jesus as a son of righteousness on a spiritual form he is at the central and sustaining the entire universe entire creation beyond the solar system christ that ascended up to heaven seated at the right hand of god has been put above all he is the central and sustaining son of the whole humanities uh, and creation and he is exalted and glorious he gives life and abundant lives is the light of the world christ is said in john to be the light of the world shining shining out truth to all humanities and the rays of christ shines forth with healing and healing can be meant to be literal healing from sickness affliction healing from a broken heart or healing as in we are healed and then we slowly learn and our spiritual men are healed and we're becoming alive to god the word of god is health to flesh we see in proverbs and at the same time comparing to the sun that scorches and burns like fire is in itself so powerful christ is that source of fire for punishment he is in itself the son of righteousness that we cannot ignore and it's so much that this is the message of the gospel that christ is the message of the gospel and uh, and the son is just an, an an imagery that we can imagine the grandeur of christ um, within the solar system jesus is the centrality of creation and and his function and his purpose is as if it's never changing 
you like it or not, the sun is there. Whether it's day or night, the sun is there. Whether you want to hide underneath the bed, in the room, total darkness, the sun is still there. And, and that, that is the, the uh, example we can't ignore. And the last two, second last sentence or, or verse in chapter 4, um, God reminds the Israelite to not forget his laws and decrees. Um, hang on to the word. They are life. They are importance to your salvation. And I think it's not only the Old Testament where before Christ comes, it's all about um, uh, obedience and following the law of the Lord. Until now, it is still important and, and relevant because law and grace are two different principles that are not contradicting each other. So you cannot have uh, uh, um, accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior um, that our sins are forgiven without then choosing to obey the law. And, and obeying the law is a natural response to his love and grace. So, laws and decrees are not to be forgotten in the days to come because God reminded the Israelites that, hey, look, these are still important. These are still the key. But of course, when Christ come for the first time, when Christ came um, for the first time, that law was made alive, another perspective of the law was, was shown to the people. To us, this message today, uh, Malachi 4, is a good reminder that, you know, people of God, don't forget the law. And as much as we soak ourselves in the grace of God and the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us day to day, let's not forget the law. Proverbs says, observe the commandment, bind them continually on your heart, tie them around your neck. So it's to that extent, it has to be so precious and close to our heart that we are consciously aware and guided by the law of the Lord. A tie to your neck means wherever you turn, that, that law of God, wherever your eye, your ear is set on, it should be guided by the law of the Lord. And last verse, it moves on to say that, uh, that you will, um, the parents uh, turning the hearts of the parents to the children and the hearts of the children to the parent. And, and I think this itself uh, means that God will bring restoration to the family. Because if you look at the church, it consists of many families. And if there are no families, it consists <coughs> of many parents and many children. So when the day of the Lord arrives, there will be a restoration on relationship of children and parent, parent and children. And that is the basic building blocks of a church. Imagine you have a church full of children, but the parents are not coming to church. Imagine you have a church full of parents, but the children are in the world. Something is not right. So when God wants to get things right, it get right right at the family unit. There will be restoration, there will be reconciliation. There will be making right with the family. And that is when we see the Holy Spirit will move. The church will grow and become significant. There will be repentance because what is that to say if one repented? But are not in the right terms with their family. If they have not honored their parents. And this 
It's what, what the Lord is trying to say. And how can we apply um, Malachi? And I think at the beginning I said it's, it, it's relevant, it's a challenging chapter because it is a message that speaks right at my heart. And for those who are who are listening to this message, who are tuning in to Zoom, this is a message that speaks right to your heart. And, and, and I do not expect that immediately you kneel down and pray, ask God to repent. No. But the word of God is so powerful that it will be, it will reach your heart, it will slowly sip in there, and then it will work its miracle, and you will be reminded of this word. I have loved you. Return to me, and I return to you. Have you been serious with God? Have you been serious with the things of God? Have we become like the Israelites that Malachi was speaking to? We are serving, the priests are offering sacrifices, but they're not offering the best. We are serving, but we are not giving God the best that we can. Have we behaved indifferently? Have we shrugged our shoulder? Uh, I want to, but I don't have the time. Oh yes, prayer meeting. Yes, it's good. Mm. Let other people join them. Serving, invited to serve. Okay, I will see and the time will come. Do we have the expectation that the day of the Lord will come? Have we, while, while we set our eyes on the day of the Lord, as in we have the perspective that whatever here is only temporal, this is not our main goal. Our main goal is on eternity. When the day comes, so if we know that the day of the Lord will for sure take place and the righteous and the God-fearing will be rewarded and assured. What are we doing now? As a believer of Christ Jesus, what, what are you doing now? Um, are you doing, are you anticipating the return? How different are we from, from the world? Have we any passion for the word of God, for the things of God? Are we serious with God? It's, it's a very, it's a question. Imagine God asking us, not, not in a very um, threatening um, manner but in a very loving manner, reminding us, hey, are you serious with my work? If we say, if we claim that we believe in the word of God, we believe that Christ will surely come again, then we need to do something now to confirm our belief. We take action now, not when Christ comes. We take action now. We say yes to the work of God. We say yes to the invitation from God. We say yes to the service of God. We want to give God our best and uh, that's the word of God to us today. Return to me and I will return to you and I will show you how richly 
I can bless you. And I will show you how much I love you. Let's end this morning with uh, with a quiet time. Let's, let's take um, some moment to pause and reflect. And like I said, I believe that the word of God spoken to you will linger in your mind. And, and I pray for the Spirit of God to work. From time to time, you will be reminded of his word. And to the extent that you say, God, yes, I want to be serious with your work. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word, for this reminder, for your assurance, Lord, that the day of the Lord will come, will surely come. Father, I thank you for the Spirit of God to work in us through your word, entering into our hearts, our mind, our thoughts, reminding us that you have loved us always and you never change. You cannot change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And Lord, you have asked us to return to you, to repent and forsake our evil ways. That we want to say we die to ourselves, that we may be fully used by you, Lord. God, forgive us of our ignorance. Forgive us of our indifference. Forgive us that we have not been passionate about your work. But Lord, today, this moment, we ask for forgiveness and we ask God to move to mold us like a clay that we may be used for your kingdom that we may be used to serve your church your people that we may be used to speak your gospel boldly that the people around us will see for themselves yes this so and so is passionate about Christ so and so is a real Christian. Father, I pray, Lord, it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. I believe that you will slowly turn our hearts back to you. And I pray, Lord, that the church at Bangsa Gospel Center will continue to grow and continue to be refined each and every one of us, Lord, will come into an encounter with you, encounter at a personal level that we see Jesus as our Savior, that we hold dear to the Word of God, to the laws and the decrees, and that we fall down and we embrace His forgiveness and grace and love of Christ. Father, indeed, your word is so powerful and your ways are way higher than our ways beyond our imagination. Lord, I ask that your word continue to convict us of our sins, that we will repent and we will draw close day by day just like the vine, Lord, that we are depending on you every day. God, let us be the vine that bears forth your fruit. And maybe may we not be cut down and put to fire. Thank you, Jesus. In the most precious name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the word. Um, we're close. Um, all of us will continue 
to study the Word of God and let the Word of God speak to us like how He speaks to us this morning. May God bless His Word. Thank you.